Hello students, this is Mrs. Yao, and today I'm going to teach you Chapter 3, Lesson 3, which is called Function Notation for my Algebra 1 class. Today we're going to start on page 71 of your journals. Function notation is the notation, and then we have F parentheses, X parentheses, instead of using Y. Now this right here, it does not mean that F is being multiplied by X, so it doesn't imply multiplication. Instead, it's how we name a function. So for example, instead of saying y equals 3x plus 7, I would say the function of x is equal to 3x plus 7. So we can either use the f, or sometimes if we have multiple functions in a problem, maybe they would have g of x, which is also function notation, equals x squared plus 2, or something like that. So function notation is just a different way of writing a function. The nice thing about function notation is whenever you see that, you know that it's a function because it's given to you in the notation. Please turn to page 72. In exercises 1 through 6, we want to evaluate the function when x is equal to three different numbers here. So what it's asking you to do is to plug in those three numbers. So we are told that f of x, or the function of x, is equal to negative x plus 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute in those numbers, but I'm going to write it as a function. So we want to find out what f of negative 4 is, and I get that from up here, negative 4. Uh, we also want to find out what f of 0 is, and what f of 2 is. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to substitute in all of those numbers for my x in the original function. So when we substitute in negative 4, it's going to be negative and then negative 4 plus 4. So that's going to be positive 4 plus 4, which is 8. So that is my answer for f of negative 4. Now we're going to plug in 0. So we have negative 0 plus 4, which is positive 4. Now let's plug in 2. Negative 2 plus 4, which is 2. So these are my three answers for number 1. Let's take a look at number 4. Uh, this time we have the function s of x equals 12 minus 0.25x. And again, we're going to plug in these three numbers. So we're going to have s of negative 4 and s of 0 and s of positive 2. And so let's go ahead and plug those in. And once I plug it in, I get positive 13, positive 12, and positive 11 and a half. I would like for you to go ahead and try number 2 and number 5 on your own. Pause the video and turn it back on when you're done. For number 2, I got g of negative 4 is equal to negative 20, g of 0 is equal to 0, and g of 2 is equal to 10. For number 5, t of negative 4 is equal to negative 8, t of 0 is equal to 4, and t of 2 is equal to 10. If you made any mistakes, see if you can find your mistake before we move on. Now I would like you to try numbers 3 and 6 on your own. Pause the video and turn it back on when you're done. For number 3, h of negative 4 is 15 h of 0 is 7, h of 2 is 3. For number 6, u of negative 4 is 13, u of 0 is 5, and u of 2 is 1. For number 7, it says, let n of t be the number of DVDs you have in your collection after t trips to the video store. So we need to explain the meaning of each statement. So a says n of 0 equals 8. And so what that means is that we said n of t is the number of DVDs you have in your collection after t trips. So t, remember, is referring to how many trips. So that means after zero trips to the store, you will have eight DVDs in your collection. Use what we did in letter A to see if you can answer letter B on your own. You should have said something like, after three trips to the store, you have 14 DVDs. Let's take a look at letter C. 
So this says, how many trips to your store? So after five trips to the store, you will have more DVDs than when you went to the store three times. And lastly, letter D, seven trips to the store minus two trips to the store means you will have 10 DVDs in your collection. For the next four problems, we need to find the value of x so that the function has the given value. So we are told that b of x is equal to 3x plus 1, and we're told that b of x also equals 20. So what we need to do is we need to take this amount, because that's what equals to b of x, and this amount equals to b of x, and if we set those equal to each other and then solve for x, we will find the value of x that makes it true. So we're going to set negative 3x plus 1 is equal to negative 20, and now we're just going to solve for x. So I'm going to subtract 1 on both sides, and that gives me negative 3x is equal to negative 21. Now I'm going to divide out my negative 3, and I find out that my answer is x equals 7. So that is the answer that when x equals 7, then the function b of x will equal negative 20. On number 10, m of x is equal to this function, and m of x, we want to find out when m, m of x will equal 2. So we're going to take both of, the, both of those amounts then. So negative 3 over 5x minus 4 is equal to 2. And we're going to go ahead and solve 4x. So my first step is to add 4 to both sides. And when I do that, I get negative 3 over 5x is equal to 6. Now, remember, each time you have a fraction with variable, you want to multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of negative 3 over 5 is negative 5 over 3. So I will do the same thing on this side. And remember why that works is because the negatives cancel out to positives, the 3s cancel to a 1, the 5s cancel to a 1, and all you're left with is that x by itself. So then on the right side, I'm going just to simplify there, and I'm going to change my negative, sorry, my 6 to 6 over 1 so that I can simplify a little bit easier, multiply the fractions. I notice that 6 and 3 can be simplified. 6 divided by 3 is 2, so I'm going to put a 1 here and a 2 here. And now I'm going to multiply 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. So that means my answer is x is equal to negative 10. I would like for you to try 9 and 11 on your own. Pause the video, and then when you're ready, turn it back on and see how you did. For number 9, I got x is equal to 9. For number 11, x is equal to negative 18. If you did not get them right, please pause the video and see if you can find your mistakes. Let's look at page 73 now. In exercises 12 and 13, they want us to graph the linear function. And so we're given a, a function here, s of x is equal to 1 half x minus 2 and then they give us a bunch of numbers to plug in. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So we're going to go ahead and plug in negative 4. So 1 half times negative 4 minus 2. So that's going to be 1 half of negative 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Now let's plug in negative 2. So 1 half times negative 2 minus 2. And that's going to give me negative 1 minus 2 which is negative 3. Now let's plug in 0. 1 half times 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Okay, and I'm going to keep going. 1 half of 2 minus 2 is negative 1. And 1 half times 4 minus 2, which will give me 0. Okay, now I have some points that I can graph on my graph here. I have 4 comma negative 4. So that's going to go down here. And then I have negative 2 comma negative 3. So that's here. 0 comma negative 2. 
and then 2 comma negative 1 and lastly 4 comma 0. So here is my function. I'm going to go ahead and connect those dots because it is a line. We want to graph the linear function and so um, I go ahead and connect the dots. I would like for you to do number 13 on your own. Pause the video and then turn it back on and see how you did. Okay, this is what I got. If you got something different, see if you can find your mistake. Last problem, the function b of m equals 50m plus 150, and that represents the balance in dollars in your savings account after m months. The table shows the balance in your friend's savings account. So the question is, who has the better plan? And they want us to explain. So let's see if we can understand 50m plus 150. So 50M means that we're going to add $50 to our account every month, and we started with $150 in our account. So let's take a look at our friend's plan. So here we have uh, in two months, uh, they added $80. And in another two months, they added another $80. So um, that means if they're adding $80 every two months, then that means it's $40 per month. Okay, and let's see what happened at the beginning. So we started with $150. Now, they did not start with $330. That's how much they had after two months. So we'd have to work backwards here. So if we worked backwards to find out what month zero is, we would have to subtract 80 from 330, which is 250. So that means that your friend started with 250 and they're adding $40 per month. We only started with 150 and we're adding $50 every month. So the question is, who has the better plan? And I guess it depends on how long you and your friend are going to be saving. Since I only started with 150 and my friend starting started with 250, then in the short term, my friend is probably has a better plan. However, if we're going to do this for a long period of time, then my plan ends up being better because I'm saving more per month than my friend is. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.